precious name we pray. Amen. Good evening, church family. Glad to see y'all tonight. Before I have Miss Courtney come up, I wanted to uh, welcome you tonight. Do we have any visitors for the first time? Anybody here for the for the very first time? Anybody? No, all home folk. Good. Well, if you are visiting and you've been here before, we're glad you came back. We do have one. Oh, looky here. All right, Amy, Jordan. Welcome, Jordan. Glad you're here. <laughs> all right. Glad you're with us tonight. Well, we have a blessing tonight. Miss Courtney's going to share with us, and we got a little bitty taste of it uh, this morning, and I'm, I'm really excited about hearing what else she has to say. Uh, and, and Brother Paul didn't skip out on us. He's in the nursery. Amen? Amen? Yeah. That's awesome right there. And so, uh, so I, I'm up here in his stead, but, but uh, Miss Courtney come up, and, and uh, we just want to pray blessings over you, and you just speak, speak your heart to us. Well, I'd like to pray first, and then after that, I have a video that I want to show you all, just so you can see a little bit of um, what it's really like through pictures, because the pictures are worth a thousand words, so <laughs> I think I said that quote right. Uh, so let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day, God, and I just thank you that we're able to gather here as brothers and sisters, Lord, and to give you all the honor and the glory for everything that you did in the six months that I was in India God, and just how you're continuing to work now, Father. Um, God, we thank you for that. And Lord, I thank you that, Lord, you allowed me to see so much fruit. You allowed me to see miracles. You allowed me to see people healed, God. And I know that there's people that are on the mission field for 20 plus years, and they never get to see the things that I saw, Lord. So I thank you for that, God, because I know that it's just a gift from you. God, I pray that our hearts would be open tonight, Father, that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, God, that today would be the day of salvation for them, Father. Um, God, I pray that you would just anoint me, Lord. Give me the words to say, Father, that I would speak absolute truth. God, that I wouldn't speak anything of my own accord, God, but completely of you, Father. God, I thank you for the people that came here tonight, God. And Lord, I pray that you would just give me the words to say, the stories to share, the scriptures to share. God, as I'm up here sharing about you, God, we give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Hey, hey, hey. 
है याकूब का परमेश्वर हमारा उचागढ़ है And we are witnessing a lot of baptism, and um, it's just a blessing for Courtney and I to be a part of because we've been able to witness a lot of fruit here. And so um, today was a blessing for us, and we have so much joy in our hearts because of everything we've been able to see that God has done. They watch, preach, so our people was guru. A people or many people was came to our church, and then now it's a very weak church, and then people are coming, and house church also growing, celebration also, and so thank you so much. So I am so excited to be here today. Today we had a baptism and we got to see, Jenna and I got to see so much of the fruit of the Lord's hands and how much he's done in our time here and how um, just pouring into the people and sharing with them and seeing them grow and then now coming here um, on this special day and seeing so many believers, new followers of Christ. Um, being baptized and um, just being here and wrapping up our time has been such a blessing from the Lord and we've met so many amazing people and just been completely blessed by the Lord and, and what He's done. Amen. God's so good. <laughs> um, I try not to, I'm trying to, like, get my composure back together after seeing that. Every time I watch the video and I see the people there and I'm just reminded of the, the hundreds of people that I met and how God did so much while I was there. I, I could stand up here for hours and not be able to to share with you the experiences um, that I that I had there and the ways that I saw the Lord move. Um, so before I get started, I wanted to to share a little bit of my testimony, uh, share a little bit about who I am and how I ended up in India. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Courtney Goldsmith. I am 20 years old. I'm a nursing student at Texas A&M University in Commerce. Um, I grew up coming to church here. This is where I found the Lord. Um, I remember as a kid, I, I, I didn't grow up knowing the Lord. Um, I had a lot of fear in my life, had, I lost a lot of people, um, as a young person, um, lost my father, lost my grandmother, lost my grandfather to a lot of really strange, um, deaths. My father overdosed on methamphetamines. Uh, my grandmother died at 50 from COPD, and um, I remember being really fearful about what would happen to me if I died. And I remember laying in my bed at night, and I would just be so overwhelmed with fear because I didn't have peace. I didn't know what was going to happen to me if I didn't wake up in the morning. Um, so I came here. Um, I remember we were having a revival, and I don't remember who was speaking, but I remember the first few nights that I was here, um, I could really feel the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me something. 
And the last night of the revival, I just fell on my knees and I gave my life to the Lord. And so my life was totally changed. Um, from that point on, I lived a, a, a li- I've lived a life without fear of death, that's for sure, because I know that when Jesus Christ rose from the grave, he defeated death, and so I no longer have to fear death. Um, so I have total and peace, total comfort and peace in him. Um, so then when I got to college, that's really when the Lord started transforming me, when he really got a hold of me. I knew him, but I wasn't really... Um, growing. I was just kind of nominal, going to church on Sunday, um, and then the Lord got a hold of me, and he, he really put it on my heart to, to do missions and to share about him and share about how he had changed my life. Um, so he allowed me to go to Mexico. I went to the Philippines, and when I was in the Philippines, man, the Lord just, he really got a hold of me and um, just broke my heart for the nations and for those that don't know him. Um, So then I got the opportunity to go to India, and before I was going to go to India, I thought I knew exactly where I was going. I had it planned out. I had, Courtney had it planned out perfectly. I was going to the Philippines for the summer. Um, I had a couple of trips I wanted to do. I love working with kids, so I was like, I'm going to the Philippines. Um, And the night before, I had to make a decision. I had to um, write down where I was going to go. They, we had options that we had to pick and then write down our top choices. And all of mine were in the Philippines. And then the night before, um, my, and my leader said to me, Courtney, why haven't you considered, um, going somewhere longer? What's holding you back? I see that the Lord's really given you a burden for the loss. What's holding you back from going somewhere else? Why there? And she's like, I really, I don't know why, but the Lord just kind of laid it on my heart that you should think about this trip to India. And I was like, well, no, I'm not interested in that. I want to go to the Philippines. She's like, well, why don't you pray about it? And I was like, okay, I'll pray about it. And um, so I, I really did. I went and I prayed about it. And I did not have peace about writing down just the Philippines. So I, I prayed about it for a while And then I really, I didn't know, I don't know why, but I knew that the Lord was telling me that he wanted me to write that trip down on my top selections. Um, So I wrote it down, and that's the trip I got. Um, I didn't know how school was going to work out. I was really fearful. I didn't want to go to India. I I really didn't. I had no desire at that point to go. Um, And then over time, the Lord just, he changed my heart, and he, he gave me the desire to go there. Um, And I had one class that I needed to take before I could start nursing school. I just started nursing school in January. Um, And for the first time ever, Commerce offered the one class that I needed during summer one, which was right before I I was leaving. So the Lord knew he had a plan, he had a purpose, and he worked it all out just so I could be there. Um, So that was awesome. So a little bit about India. Um, The main religion in India is Hinduism, Um, and as you saw on the slide, there are 330 million Hindu gods. Um, So typically, whenever you walk into a house um, in India, you'll see an idol stand. They'll have their little idols up on their shelf that they give food to, that they burn incense for. Um, there's also bells that they use to shake and wake their God up. Um, it's, it's very interesting. There's a God for death and destruction. There's a God for creation. There's, um, one of the stories is there was, it's Ganesh is the name of one of their, their gods. And he chopped his son's head off and replaced his head with an elephant's head. And so that's their God. Um, Just the, there's very interesting beliefs that they have. Um, They put black eyeliner on all the kids and the babies to ward off evil spirits. Um, They put black around the waist. Um, Still, even at my university, I see college students, they have black on their hands and arms and things like that, and that's to ward off evil spirits. Um, And evil spirits are, man, they're a real thing in India for sure. They're a real thing here too. Um, so one of my first weeks there, 
um, how I traveled a lot was just walking. Um, I ta caught taxis. I got on these three-wheeler taxi things. Um, I rode the train, and the train was um, basically it's as many people as you can fit into this one little train cart. There's no doors on it. It's just open. Um, and so most of my traveling was two hours standing up on the train, hands up. It's uh, super humid there, and so it's really hot. It's right on the ocean. I was in Mumbai, which is in northeast India. Um, and so you're standing there, hands up, dripping sweat, um, just right body to body with other women, and it's, it's unbelievably crowded. Um, there's trash everywhere. When people have trash, they'll just throw it in the ocean. They'll throw it on the ground. They'll just throw it wherever they f can find a place to throw it. Um, so one of the, and also another interesting thing, as you saw, the clothing there is completely different. The clothing's different. You don't wear, you don't show your legs. That's very immodest. You don't show um, your upper body at all. You can show your stomach. That's not immodest to them. Um, and the food's very different. Everything's really spicy. As you saw in the video, you eat with your hands. Um, so one, anyways, one of my first weeks there, I got the opportunity to go to this small little house. It was on the side of a mountain. And we rode the train there, and then we got off, and we walked about a mile up the side of this mountain to a small little, it was made out of tin. This little shack was made out of tin, and that was their house. They didn't have furniture. They didn't have um, a stove. They didn't have a washer and dryer. Didn't have anything like that. It was just one little square broom with and it was tin with holes in the walls, didn't have a door, one light bulb from the ceiling. Um, so we get there, and the translator tells me, okay, sister, um, you're going to share a Bible story to this evening. And I was like, oh, great. You know, I was a little nervous because I was feeling a little bit inadequate at that time. I didn't know if I was really prepared or really good enough to... Um, be teaching people about Jesus. That was something I really struggled with is, am I good enough? I'm too young. I'm a woman. I, I, I don't have the skills that it takes to, I don't know enough about of the Bible. I didn't memorize enough scripture. Um, and the Lord taught me, all you need to do is put your trust in me. You don't need to know all the answers. Um, so I got there, and I go into telling the story of, um, I was going to tell the demon-possessed man story. I really like that story just because it's very action-y. You're ripping chains off of you. You get to do a lot of acting. So I was really excited. And I go into the story, and the translator says, Sister, we already shared that story last week. And I was like, oh, man, great. So I'm already nervous, and now I have to pick another story. So I was thinking, Jesus walking on water. So I go into it, and I'm like, oh, and the waves, and, you know, the disciples got scared. And so then... He says, sister, we shared that story a few weeks ago. Maybe you can share a different story. And so <laughs> then I go into, I think I went into like Zacchaeus, Jonah and the well. I went into a bunch of different stories. And every time he would say, I already shared this story with these kids before. And so then I'm just standing there and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what is it that you want me to share? I know that I have a plan and that I, I wanted to, to share the demon-possessed man story because that's my favorite. But, Lord, what do you want me to share? And so one of the, the other people that were with me, they were like, why don't you just share your testimony? Share how Jesus has transformed your life. Um, so I went into my testimony. I shared, you know, the gospel I shared, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. God demonstrates his love to us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. So I shared that with these children and with these few women that were there. And... That was the first opportunity that I had. My first week there, I got to lead a woman to faith. Um, so I know, looking back, that it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't the fact that the stories had already shared. It was the fact that God had a plan in place 
that night. He knew that there was going to be someone there that needed to hear the gospel and needed to hear about him. Um, so I just challenge you, my challenge with that is to be flexible. Look for opportunities to just be Holy Spirit led. A lot of times it's easy to have our own plan. The fleshly desire is to do things on our own and take control ourselves. And um, But if you acknowledge God in all your ways, he will direct your path and he'll show you exactly what he wants you to do. Um, so I want to go into another story. Some notes on my phone. So another time, so basically what I did in my time there was I was looking for women who were believers. Um, there's not a lot of believers in India. That there's, I think it's 2% of the population of India knows Jesus. And that's really sad. There, it's heavily, heavily populated. Um, there's, I would say in the city where I was, I heard statistics that it would take, there's more people in the city that I was in than there are in like Texas, Georgia, I mean, a bunch of states combined, all in this one city. It's heavily, heavily populated. Um, so we would go, we would search for believers, and that was definitely spirit-led. We didn't really have a lot of connections. Um, we would just pray, Lord, show me believers, bring me to believers. And I could tell you story after story of when he did. He would bring believers to us. Um, we would meet them just random places out on the street, on the train. Um, so then whenever we found these believers, we would recruit them because we were recruiting believers for the team of God to go out and share the gospel because they're a lot more equipped to share the gospel to their people than we are. Um, because if they're speaking the language, they know the culture, they're going to be a lot better at sharing Jesus than what we are. Even though, you know, we may know it a little bit better, that's what we were doing, teaching them so that they could continue to do it. Even when we left, it wasn't just a small, short, little time that we were there and then we came home, but it's something that's going to continue for years and years and years, and we won't ever see the fruit of it until we're in eternity with God. Um, so we we would collect these believers, and then we would send them out two by two, Luke 10 style, that's what we like to call it, and Luke 10 is when Jesus sends out the 72 two by two, and he tells them to search for a person of peace, and then if you find them, you stay there, you don't go from house to house, um, you heal the sick, eat and drink all that they give you, that's always a tough one, eat and drink all that they give you, um, <laughs> heal the sick, and, of course, don't forget to share the gospel. And so we would send them out to do that, two by two. And one afternoon, um, the translator and I were going out two by two, and we come to this house, and there's this sweet young girl there. She was probably 17. She had a little baby, and she just had the sweetest smile. And she was obviously a person of peace. She said, come into my house. I want to give you chai, which is tea, Indian tea and we're gonna give you cookies and water. And so she was just coming to my house. I, I wanna hear whatever you have to say. So we went in and the first time we were there, I shared just my testimony with her, shared the gospel with her, um, creation to Christ and what, um, how we believe the world was created and how we get eternal life through Christ Jesus. And so, she, she seemed really interested. She loved it, and she said she had already heard a little bit about Jesus before, but she wanted to learn more. And we asked her, would you like to follow Jesus? And she said, well, I need to talk to my husband first. And so if you'll just come back next week, I'll talk to him, and we'll see what happens. And I was like, absolutely. Like, we'll come back every week. And so the next week, the translator went back, and he got to meet with the husband and talk with him. And then the following week, I went back with him, and the Lord laid it on my heart to share the story of the Samaritan woman. Um, so the story of the Samaritan woman, Jesus is traveling through a foreign land, and he comes to a well, and then he's sitting down, and up comes the Samaritan woman, and he says to her, give me a drink. And the woman is really surprised because Samaritans were seen as lower, 
class people, lower caste. She probably wasn't educated. Um, we see later on in the story she obviously wasn't respected because she had five husbands. Um, and so he says to her, give me a drink. And the Samaritan woman says to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? And so Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And so the woman says, where do you get this water? I want this water. And um, he says to her, um, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And so the woman says, sir, give me this water. I want this water. And Jesus tells her, okay, okay, first go get your husband and bring him back. And she says, I don't have a husband. And Jesus tells her, you're right, for you have five husbands. And the woman's thinking, how does he know this? You know, I perceive maybe you're a prophet. And then Jesus, and then she says to Jesus, she says, I've heard that the Messiah is coming. And he tells her, I am the Messiah. And then he, she goes back to her village and she tells everyone of a man that told her everything she had ever done. And many people became followers of Jesus because she shared her testimony. And so as I'm sitting there with Komal and I'm sharing this story with her, I tell Komal, Komal, if Jesus was sitting here right now, the one thing that he would want you to know is that he loves you so much. And he offers this same living water right now to you that he offered 2,000 years ago. He offers it to you right now. All you have to do is take it. Um, so Komal said, yes, yes, I want this living water. And so we were able to, to continue to share with her, make sure she could repeat back to us, this is the gospel, this is what I'm choosing to believe. Um, so without us telling her, this is what you pray, this is what you say, she had never prayed to Jesus before. And we got to hear her pray the sweetest prayer. Um, and I can't quote it exactly, but it was along the lines of, you know, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need you, and I, I confess that I sin, and I know that it's because of you that I can be cleansed and made righteous. And um, she said, thank you for bringing these people here. And she was just going on and on and on. And we, had, we didn't tell her this is how you pray. We didn't say, hey, come on, pray like this, and you'll accept Jesus. Um, she, she knew she needed him, and she prayed right then and asked him, you know, to come, and he did, and it was amazing um, just to witness that and to see the fact that how important it is to, to really invest in people. Um, we see in Matthew 28, 18, and 20 when Jesus um, commands the disciples, he says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age. And something that the Lord really showed me, I'd, I'd read this passage before, and I was like, yes, Jesus commands us to go. We have to go share the gospel. But then the last part of that is, you know, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So it's not just, here's your gospel tract. Have fun finding Jesus. I'll see you later. Um, it's teaching them to observe all that I've commanded, making a disciple, really investing in them. Um, so my challenge to you with that is whenever you do share the gospel, when, when the Lord provides those opportunities to, to share with someone, make it not about making a, a decision, but making a disciple. Make it about a, the person and not a project. Really invest and love that person, invest in them, and just show them the love of Jesus. Um, another cool thing about that, um, I brought a Bible for Komal. That was her name, Komal. And I was really excited. Um, if you don't know, India has like hundreds and hundreds of different languages. And so I obviously could not read the language, uh, but I had a Bible for her and I gave it to her and she said, this isn't my language. And I was like, oh no, I got the wrong language. So I was really upset and she was like, the pastor was like, it's okay, it's okay, I'll bring another one for her, don't be upset, we'll bring another one. 
So I went to get in the taxi on the way home, and the taxi is just a three-wheeler with a box around it. It's not like a car with air conditioning or anything. And the taxi driver is, we're talking in Hindi, which is the, the national language there. I'm talking to him in Hindi a little bit, and he's asking me, you know, what I've been doing, and he's telling me that he's a believer. And so he somehow got on this topic of, man, I've always wanted a Bible that was in my mother tongue. My mother tongue's Marathi. And I said, oh, I have a Bible right here. It's in Marathi. And so I was able to give him that Bible in Marathi. And the Lord had a purpose for that Bible. And that's exactly why that was the wrong language, because really it was the right language for him. And the Lord knew that he needed it. Um, so it was really awesome how the Lord worked all of that out. Um, so uh, in India, there's a lot of spiritual warfare. Um, it's, an, it's just unexplainable. It's something that I could have never been prepared for. Um, I'd, I'd heard about it in the Bible. I've read Jesus cast demons out of people. Um, the disciples cast demons out of people. Um, it talks about the battle not being against flesh and blood, but against the forces in the heavenly places. It talks about wearing the whole armor of God and being protected from the enemy. And I had read all this, but I was still not prepared for the things that I was going to see when I got to India. Um, just one Another story for those of you who weren't here this morning. Um, I have a lot of different stories where I got to see people healed. Um, but we were, again, doing a training, and a training consisted of doing the Luke 10 teaching and sending them out two by two. And so my partner was, a sick, was sick a lot, so I had to work with the Indians there most of the time. That's really who my only friends were. That's all I hung out with. And so I was going out two by two with the translator, and we come to this house, and when I saw the house, I just felt like just a, a weight on my spirit. I can't even explain it. It was just, I felt it was evilness there. There was darkness there, um, but I didn't have fear. I, I don't know how I didn't have fear. It was the Lord, obviously. He told me to go in, and so I went in there, and there were two sons there, and so we, we go into sharing the gospel with them. We share, that time we share the story of the prodigal son. Since there were two of them, I just thought that'd be a cool story to share. And so we shared that. And then afterwards, they ask if we would pray for them. And so I felt a little darkness at this point because when I got there and I started talking about Jesus, the mother who was asleep when I got there as soon as she, I started talking, she got up, and she was just walking all over the house, back and forth, back and forth, and making weird noises. She was going, I mean, and just would not stop. I thought she had something in her mouth or something. I didn't, I really didn't know, and then the husband got up. He went outside. He didn't want to be in the house with us in there, um, so then I start praying for the son in the name of Jesus, and when I started praying for him, um, it's really a feeling that I can't even explain to you. Um, he just starts, he starts spinning around in circles. He starts screaming and screeching and growling. And it was, his body was contorting and just turning. And it looked like, um, I, the only way I know how to explain it is here's his stomach. And something was inside and punching the inside of his stomach trying to come out. Um, so we just, I just kept praying for him in the name of Jesus, and I, I didn't even open my eyes. I was just praying in the name of Jesus, and suddenly, I mean, he just kind of stood still for a moment, and I was like, okay, you know, I, I still knew he wasn't healed. I could just, I don't know how to explain it, but I knew he wasn't healed, and the Lord told me, you know, I want you to come back here again, and so the next week, I said, you know, I told my partner, Jenna, I said, Jenna, let's pray and fast, and then let's go back again and pray for this family and this house and the, this young man again. And so we did. We prayed and fasted. And when we got to the training area, that, which was just a house with one bedroom with mats on the floor sitting in a circle, um, I was standing up, and we were doing songs, and all of a sudden I just got 
deathly ill. I mean, I was never really sick in India, and which is uncommon, but the Lord protected me. But all of a sudden, I was, you know, just deathly ill. I couldn't even stand up. I was weak. I felt nauseous. And so one of the aunties came and got me, and she took me to another room, and sh they just told me, they insisted that I lay down and on the floor. Well, the floor was just concrete, and then they gave me, like, a pillow that was pretty much just like a T-shirt. And so I laid down and fell asleep for two hours on the concrete. And the whole time, my partner was doing the training and teaching the women that we were working with, a group of about 20 women. And so then the translator comes, and he wakes me up after the training, and he says, you know, sister, you need to get up and go. Satan does not want you out sharing the gospel. Otherwise, you would not be in here sick. And so he says, you need to get up, and you need to go share. You've been praying and fasting to go to this house. You need to get up and go. And so I was like, absolutely, let's go. So we got up, and I could barely walk, and I was just super sick. And so we get to the house. And this time, the two brothers had a friend with them. And long story short, we got to share the gospel with the friend. The friend decided that he wanted to follow Jesus that day, so we got to lead him to Christ. And then I left the house, and I was 100% better. I, it was like night and day. I was sick, and I could barely walk. And then we left, and I could have ran a marathon. I was just uh, totally, completely healed. And so we get back to the little training area and come to find out the, those 20 women had shared the gospel with over 300 people that day and over 100 people decided to follow Jesus that day. Um, so obviously, you know, Satan, he wants to come in. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to come and destroy everything and he wants to get in the way you know if I had just gotten sick and I didn't get up maybe we wouldn't have sent our women out or if Jenna hadn't been there maybe the women wouldn't have heard and wouldn't have been encouraged to go out um, but Jesus won the victory that day and he wins the victory every day um, so my challenge to you with that is even as I'm here in America I see so many times that the enemy comes and he tries to the first place he goes is your family, your relationships, your brothers, your sisters in Christ. And he just wants to mess all that up because one is going to be far less effective than two is or three is or four is or five. Um, so I challenge you just to not let the enemy get to you. We don't need to give Satan too much credit for what he's doing. We need to give, we know that Jesus has won the victory, so we got to give him all the credit and let him take control of everything. Um, and that's something the Lord really showed me is don't give Satan too much credit because there was a point when I started seeing all this spiritual warfare and all of this. I wanted, I started searching the Bible to see what it said about Satan. And I started searching the internet. What's the Bible say about, you know, what, how to, how to handle demon possession, how to handle spiritual attacks. And then the Lord really convicted me that I was spending too much time thinking about what all Satan was doing, and I wasn't giving him enough credit for he, he's already defeated him, and I have Jesus in me, then I don't, I don't need to worry about that. Um, so that was really awesome, just getting to see that. There was another time um, that there was a little boy who came, and I saw him, and he had a big ringworm on his head, and it was just oozing, it was infected, it was nasty. And my first thought, you know, being... The American nursing student I am and loving medicine, let's get him some medicine. You know, let's, I can go, I can go to the chemist. That was the name of the pharmacy there, the chemist. And I said, let's go to the chemist and we can get some medicine and we'll put it on him because the mom of this child couldn't afford medicine. She didn't have enough money to go buy her own medicine for him. And she was just like, he'll be okay, he'll be okay. And it takes, I knew when I saw it, it takes months of antibiotics to get ring, rid of ringworms. I remember when I was a kid, I had one It took three, four months to get rid of it. And so <laughs> I told I, I told them, I'll, I'll get medicine. And then the, they were like, no, we don't, we don't want medicine for, for him. And so I was like, okay, well, then let's just pray over him. Let's pray over him in the name of Jesus. And so we prayed over him. Two weeks later, I went back, and the ringworm was gone, and his hair was already growing back. Um, so the Lord, the Lord still heals people. 
He still does it. Um, and the Lord showed me so much about prayer when I was there. He taught me a lot about um, just looking to him for things and not trying to do it on my own accord. Um, we see in James 5 where it says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone among you happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call upon the elders of the church to anoint them with oil. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And if you read that whole chapter, it says prayer a, a ton of times. And so, and there's plenty of other passages in the, in the Bible where um, we're told to pray about things. And the Lord really showed me how important that is and how important it is just to go to him and ask him to, to heal people and to have faith, not just pray and, you know, still go get medicine, but I ask him to heal him, then I have faith that he's going to heal him, and that's it. Go on. He's going to heal him. And um, there were tons of other stories about that I would love to share, all about the times that I saw the Lord heal people, and I saw people who were paralyzed that can now walk. I heard stories of people who were prayed about in the name of Jesus who can now see. Um, multiple people who had evil spirits and that they were cast out by um, in the name of Jesus. And I was just blown away um, by everything that the Lord did and getting to see so much of that because he didn't have to show me those things. I, did, I didn't have to get to see him. And yet he still, he still allowed that to happen. Um, another time we were at an all-night prayer meeting, and this is something the Lord just laid on my heart before I was coming here to share with y'all. Um, we were going to an all-night prayer meeting, and it was really hot. It was hot. It was sweaty. We were going to pray all night long, and we were fasting too, so we hadn't eaten and it was probably 110, 105. It was really, really hot. And the water there isn't the kind of water that we drink. So we would, every time we drank water, we would bless it and then we would drink it. And praise the Lord, we never got sick from the water. Um, but this prayer meeting, there was, we were singing. And all of a sudden, this woman just starts running up on the stage and running back. And she tried to come up and take the microphone from people. And um, she, at one point, she came and put money up there. And then she, she was just being very distracting. And she was falling on the floor. She was, she was just acting really crazy. And so the Lord told me to go pray for her. So long story short, ended up praying for her for probably an hour that night, just an hour straight of just praying for her. There was a lot of evil baggage that she had in her life. Um, and there were other believers that came and prayed for her as well. And then the next day on my way home, that's when I went to the hospital. Um, I got super sick. Um, I, my legs were swollen, I was dehydrated, and I went to the hospital, and turns out that woman ended up being healed after, after that, um, but it's, there's time after time that the Lord just showed me how powerful he is, and how, how many battles there are that we don't realize that are happening, um, because we, first of all, we don't realize that Jesus is with us all the time. We don't realize that the Holy Spirit is with us at all times, so we don't, we don't give him credit for what he's doing. Um, and the Holy Spirit is with us. He's in us at all times, and he's constantly working. Um, I'm trying to think another story I wanted to share. Um, so another time, um, we had a a prayer meeting up on the second floor of this house. We were sitting on bats. There wasn't any fans. It was right on a salt field, right by the ocean. They had some way that they were like filtering for salt. And so 
we were just up there. We were meeting. We were um, praying. And then something uh, interesting is that even people in India that don't believe in Jesus, they know that he heals. So whenever they hear that Christians are there, followers of Jesus are there, they'll always bring their people for healing. So they may not believe in him. They may not have been born into a Christian family, but they know that our Jesus heals. And so this husband brought his wife, and she also, she had, he, first thing he tells us, she has an evil spirit, and she's banging her head back and forth and just foaming at the mouth and just acting really crazy. And so we pray for her in the name of Jesus, and then that was it. We just said, okay, Lord, we've prayed. You, you've got control of the, this. You don't need us to take care of this. You got this. So we prayed, and then we continued with the service. And we shared with the husband, and we shared the gospel with him. And he said that he wanted to follow Jesus. So he, follow, he made the decision to follow Jesus that day. And then fast forward a few months, um, that video that I showed at the end where we were doing a baptism and all the women were standing out in the ocean, and that was a really special day. That day, that man got baptized. And then his wife was there, and she was totally healed. She didn't have an evil spirit anymore. She was, came up and gave us a big hug and was just so thankful that we had prayed for her in the name of Jesus. Um, so it was just really amazing to see the things that the Lord has done. I, I want to wrap up. I could stand up here and talk literally for hours about everything that the Lord did. Um, one of the, I want to wrap up with a verse that he really, um, he, he really spoke to me through when I was in India. It's Matthew 13, verse 44, and it says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And so the Lord really, he really convicted me. And he, he, he told, he just spoke to me and said, you know, Courtney, is it worth it? Am I worth it? Are you willing to sell everything that you have? Are you willing to give up your life? Are you willing to give up your family, your friends, to go and buy this field? Go get this treasure because I'm worth it. And so the Lord really, he really challenged me with that. And I tell you, he is worth it. And the things that we're gathering now, the, the fleshly things, the things of the world, they are worth nothing compared to the rewards that we're going to have in heaven for the things that we do for the Lord. Um, so my challenge to you is just to, to let, the, let the Lord work through you. Um, I challenge you to go and share the gospel um, that if you're looking for purpose in your life and fulfillment in your life, you're only going to find it in Jesus Christ. And you're only going to find your purpose whenever you're going out and sharing about him. You're going to, right in the middle of God's will is the best place to be. And it's the best feeling and the, the greatest amount of joy that you're going to get is when you're right in the middle of his will. Um, so I thank you for having me up here. Um, I pray that the Lord has spoken to you and if you don't know him, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So I pray that today would be the day that you, you would know him. And I truly do believe that if Jesus was here right now, the one thing he'd want you to know is that he loves you. Um, so, so let's pray. Let's close in prayer and thank the Lord for all that he's done. So Lord Jesus, we come to you right now, God, and we give you all the honor and all the glory, Father, for the amazing things that you've done in India, God, and Lord, how you're continuing to work right here, Father, and God, how you're allowing so many people in my generation, and God, you're allowing opportunities to share on our campuses, God, to reach out to international students. Lord, it's, it's, a, an, it's an amazing time where you're bringing people from all over the world to right here, Syrian refugees, international students, Lord. God, I pray that we would receive them with open arms lovingly, God, that we would always be prepared to, to share your truth with them, Father. God, I pray that you would do a mighty work in this church, Lord. I pray that you would 
um, right, bring up young people, God, that have the desire to go and serve you and to share about you, Father. God, I know that, Lord, that it was right here, Father, where I, I first really met you, Lord. And God, I pray that um, you would just do a mighty work in Silver Springs and Commerce and all the surrounding areas, Hopkins County, Hunt County, Father. I pray that this would be the year of revival, God. And Lord, I pray, God, I ask that, God, not that you would come back soon, Father, but that you would stay away a little longer, God, just so that maybe we could reach one more lost person, Father. And Lord, I thank you that you're so good to us, Lord. God, I thank you that, God, you supply all our needs, Father. And God, that you're always with us. We give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.